Good morning, we got the next day. We're at it again with the Mercedes here. Looking at this air cleaner here. Uh, just taking off the, all the nuts. Let's get this taken off. Let's see what we got. Let's come off. Okay. I'm not used to this. Okay. So yeah, so there's definitely oil in here. The air filter isn't the worst, but um, this is like really loose and a lot of blow by must be getting through there. So I'm gonna take a look at it. There's a couple of things I gotta do, but there is a pretty bad oil leak and I gotta figure out where it's coming from. I It's somewhere either in the intake or the turbo. I, I can't figure it out, but I will figure it out. The intake is full of oil, so I'm sure it's for blow by. I'm trying to figure out this oil leak and what's going on here. And the inside of the air cleaner is completely filled with oil. The breather for the, off the valve cover, all the blow by is gonna go and it's plumbed right into the top of this cap. This goes like this. And then that, that gets plumbed into that pipe there. I don't know where it's leaking from, but I can tell you the entire, something high is leaking because the entire air cleaner, this was covered in oil everywhere. This is covered in oil. There's oil from the very high up down. So there may be more than one oil leak. I'm sure there is, but I'm trying to figure out the main one here and it's something really high. And I know there's a ton of oil in here. I gotta assess this a little bit better. I gotta see what's going on. I gotta clean it up and then I will uh, report back on what I, what I think. But I'm thinking about sealing some of this stuff up and tightening this up. I got the intake tubes all cleaned up. This stuff was caked with oil grime. I've been watching that, that Kent from Mercedes Source on YouTube. Go watch him. You know, if you have one of these vehicles, obviously he knows what he knows what's going on. He mentions these seals. This is the seal that goes against the turbo. It's there, but it's all cracked. And then this seal, which goes into the intake here, there there was no seal. So I'm gonna have to order a new seal there. That's gonna be pulling air in from unfiltered air. So here's the deal with with engine oil leaking. Okay, this I got it all cleaned up. Now Sherman hears me talking, so. He, he's got to get involved. So what the deal is, is you have your you have your air coming in from the outside, goes through the filter, then it goes down through this pipe here, this tubing, and then it goes through here, which is uh, feeds your turbo. So here's the lid on here, and then this is the breather coming off of your valve cover. So that's where my blow by is coming in, which has oil, contains oil. Well, they thought of that because this contraption is where that tube goes into and it's it's like a little catch can. Now I pried this open so I have it off. It's just a little can down there so that gets dumped in, goes down into this can. Whatever is actually liquid will drain out of this nipple which has an o-ring which is really flat, so I gotta probably find a replacement for that, which then drains down this tube, which goes into the oil pan. And when that goes in here, I'm thinking all of the oil, va it's like vaporized, and this floppy dingle bopper, I'm thinking a ton of oil is coming out of this area and dispersing, and also getting sprayed out of here. It's like oil city for miles and miles and miles, and ends up pooling. Then it seeps, I'm thinking this, this it seeps through the filter, gets the filter oily, which it was a little oily, and then there's a weep hole right here, which it's draining out of and going all over the vehicle. I'm gonna try and seal that, that may be a mistake because this may completely fill up with oil because of it, but another thing I'm gonna do is, it shouldn't fill up with oil because this drain can should be the thing draining it. I'm just gonna put RTV silicone in there, and seal that puppy up so then we don't get this flopple dinger. And then another thing I'm thinking about doing is taking a piece of heat rose, putting it on the end of that, and putting it farther down the snout here so if it does need to burn oil, it can do so. I just did a little rehab on the crankcase uh, valve cover vent breather 
So this is where it goes into the valve cover. And I took it all apart, cleaned it all up. There's like insulation. I don't know if it's... I don't know why that's on there, honestly. But it was a sleeve around this tubing. And I just cleaned all this with spray 9, degreased it, and then I put silicone spray on there to hopefully preserve the rubber a little bit. The car just had zip ties around here. So I'm sure that's not as good as a hose clamp as far as leaks for oil because there's a lot of blow... This is where all the blow by I think is coming through. Um, coming into the intake here. So I'm going to replace them with hose clamps at all the connections. So in the uh, intake housing here, this is the stud where the uh, wing nut would be when you put the cover on. Well, it was completely stripped. So I just took a file and I'm filing this down in a nice cylindrical motion. And I'm checking, just to keep it even, I'm checking with calipers here to get it at closest to 190 or below, 190 thousandths or below, because I gotta die for number 10, 24, and I wanna try and cut the threads on that, but I need 190 thousandths major diameter, so. Got the die started. Got all these nice chips flying into the intake. Isn't that great? The die is uh, did its job here. 1024 wing nut here. Look at that. So that works perfect. Run this down there again without cutting new threads. Then I will file the top a little bit, touch, get these off, and then run the die off again, and it'll be done. We are on the intake oil separator vapor condensing unit. It's leaking out of the edge of the side here because it does not get a good seal. It does one of these deals. This tube goes down and then the vapors are supposed to go down this this other portion of the tube and then into the intake and get burned. So when this is on there it's not tight at all. So it leaks out of here too. So what we're going to do and then I, I added a little bit of heater hose with an angled cut so that when the vapors do go, it shoots out into the intake a little bit better. So what we're gonna do first, take this off, and then I'm going to, so right here I was thinking about getting an O-ring and putting it in there, but I had to order the O-ring for that exact size and really want to pay the money or wait. So, and then I thought about using a paper gasket and cut it to size, but I, I'm just gonna put Permatex RTV silicone and, uh, we're gonna see how that works. First things first, we gotta take the prison shank because this is all hard. This is hard. It's hard until about here. So you're gonna take the prison shank and you, and you shank it. And then you, you try not to shank it through the backside, but he that was a kill shot. He's done. He's gonna get oozed out of both ends. Look at <laughs> Oh well. I don't have to show you all this, but just give you the idea of uh, using this here. Oh yeah, I cleaned this. I dried all the oil off of this and cleaned it with alcohol. We are going to put this in there with trying to not making a mess. And we bend that clip down until it's really snug, which it is snug. And we're gonna wipe it inside here. And I'm gonna be a little bit liberal on this one. So now that that's in there, I'm gonna push this on. Just like that. I'm gonna paint just like this all around. And uh, just to kind of give it another. Look at the tank. Ooh, a tank meow on camera. Very rare. Seriously? We're out here in the, in the nighttime, night wrenching here. We got the Mercedes. Oh, I'm 617. I got the air cleaner pretty well the way I want it. What I want to do right now is start it up, get it a little bit warmed up, and see how we fared on the modification for the oil separator for when this blow by goes into the intake. So, all right, I got the air cleaner off, the air filter off. And I hope to breathe her back up. 
catch can where the oil was leaking down. Right here. Definitely blow by coming out of that tube. pretty much up to operating temperature um, now granted I was just idling and giving it a couple revs didn't give it any true road miles but last time I did even less running of that and it was oil was just running down and puddling right here and it was because it was leaking out of the sides of this here so I'm gonna call it as of now a success um, you can tell all the oil that's on the intake tube there which it's gonna have blow by so there's no there's no way around it. <laughs> it's just where the oil goes, pretty much what I'm trying to solve. So you can see how much, look at all that, how much it's capturing. So that's what you want. You don't want it blowing inside of here like it was. The cap is off and I got the air cleaner out, the actual filter. So if this is an update on the oil separator catch can situation. Everywhere that I RTV'd is sealed. If you remember, it was dripping out right here, going down and pooling right there after like five, three to five minutes of idle time. This is after actually driving it on the road probably 15 miles. So pulling, you know, under, under load, um, pulling some hills, going up a mountain and stuff. So it was under load before it was just idling. So this is the first true test. There's definitely oil down there, which is where I wanted it to go. There's some that leaked right here, but I'm talking, that's a small amount. And it looks like that it leaked from this seal, which is, this just gets pressed on. There's like no hose clamp or anything. So it's just a loose fit and a little bit leaked right there, but that is minor compared to what it was. I'm not gonna call it a success yet. We need to do a long-term run with it and test it, but we're gonna see if this was the main culprit for all of the oil leaking. I don't have to show you with the air cleaner off, but all the oil leaking on the turbo and on this entire side of the engine. Here we have the turbo seal that goes from the intake into the actual turbo and it is hard this was a hard seal to find in stock right now this is winter of 2022 the only place i could find it was ebay i already put it on the car but they sold it as a uh, like a maroon high temp real gummy type seal it fit perfectly but it was not the cheapest seal in the world so got that replaced working on figuring out how to get the other seal on the upper portion of the you the intake youtube horn whatever you want to call it and um, that's gonna take a little bit of extra work, so I'll let you I'll let you know how that goes. This is what we got. I'm working on this intake, these intake seals for tube that goes from the intake into the turbo. So this is the rubber seal that goes around the metal portion of the intake that is new. I just replaced it. The car had nothing on it. There's a boss that this groove has that mates in there. So that works perfect. It fits perfectly on there. So that tells me, and this is metal, that tells me that this is probably correct. Okay, the seal is correct. This is an OEM Mercedes seal. Here's the problem. You go to put this seal inside of this plastic portion and you can tell that this isn't round anymore it's like smashed down so the seal just no matter what you do you can do whatever you want it's like you know you look at that you're gonna say it's the wrong seal it's physically impossible for that thing to go in there which I agree because it might you know something does tell me it might be the wrong seal still but regardless that's the only seal I can even find for this type of situation is this guy so we're gonna try and I don't have a pipe expander for exhaust so I'm gonna try and heat this thing up and shove this on there and see if we can get this this is a lampshade look at this is a, this is a, a lampshade that I took off this is aluminum and it's a lampshade that I have a kink in it now right here 
so that it doesn't Are hit. Are you going to explain why you needed the lampshade? It needs to be a taper so that when I heat this up and I push this down. But the first step that we got to do is heat it up with a heat gun here. Let's see what happens. Let's see where that brings us. Oh yeah, she's... Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Nope, I don't know. But it's definitely uh, better. Very, very good. <laughs> Check that out. Get that on film. Get that on film. Yeah! So that's in there. Now, what I probably should do while it's nice and soft, you know what? Let's throw it on the car right now because that thing is malleable. Alrighty, we're gonna finish up this video. I'm gonna show you what we got here. Uh, we got the car, we got the intake, we got it all. All right, so here's what I did not show on film on what I did, okay? The maroon uh, bottom turbo side of the intake seal, which is down there, um, that one just slips right on. Like I said, it went well. The, the way that I ended up getting this top seal to work which you can see the you can see the edge of it right there is I had to heat up the plastic in the vise like I showed before insert the the rubber seal in the plastic intake tube and have it stick out I'm going to I'm going to call it like an eighth of an inch okay you wanted it about an eighth of an inch to maybe 3/16 sticking out you know out of the plastic housing so that you can feel it with your finger all the way around as you're pushing the the housing on so this was heated up it was soft that seal was sticking out a little bit i lubricated the metal portion of the intake housing a little bit with soapy water and i pushed with all that soft and everything and pushed it on there and got it to go on it was difficult i'm gonna warn you it's tough to get that to seal. And the reason why you keep that seal outboard a little bit is so that you can tell that it doesn't get squished back into the, uh, you can see it all the way around and you know that it doesn't get, that seal tends to get squished and like pushed into the intake horn or the intake tube. So that's what prevents that. And I got that on there. And then also to remove the entire intake housing, you keep this hose clamp tight and you just remove the lower hose clamp and when you remove this whole housing out you keep this intake tube connected at this portion so then you don't have to keep fighting that seal every single time i mean obviously if you got to take it off at some point you do it but that's that's what it is so there you go there you have it we got the intake pretty well um modified to my liking another thing i did not show is the intake's a little bit loose. Uh, it's not that loose, but it, it does vibrate. And one of the three intake mounting bushings, so the rubber bushings, is a little bit weaker than all the other ones. So I'm going to get three replacements of those. That's pretty self-explanatory. You guys can figure that out. Um, there's other videos on that as well. But yeah, there you go. That's the end of it. That's going to show it. And I'll, you know, I'll, I'll keep an eye on how much blow-by and oil is inside of the intake as I drive it. But I got to drive it first, so we got to work on other stuff. So that's going to finish it up for this video. Stay tuned for the next one. We're going to do some minor body work, rust repair. We even got a little bit of paint going on here. I mean, this is getting crazy, but we got to keep this rolling and stay tuned for the next project.